Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dora and today we're talking ENFPs versus ESFPs. And okay, what do you think of when you think of an ENFP personality type? First, I would say an indomitable intuitive willpower, an ability to see through and make the impossible happen, an ability to make a bigger difference in society and to be a catalyst of change in the world. But when you think of the ESFP, rather what you see is a person who is able to reach anyone, who is able to get their voice heard, who is able to make themselves understood and to connect to the people across the globe with their books, with their writing, with their movies, with their videos and with whatever it is they choose to do. So the ESFP belongs on stage, the ENFP belongs rather beneath the scenes, behind the scenes, where they can pull and adjust uh, all the currents and use all the patterns around them to make changes. So the ENFP and the ESFP are well recognized for their completely different fears in life, their completely different struggles in life. With the ESFP, the main issue is clear sightedness, vision, understanding what is going on with the situation, confusion, perpetual confusion. What am I? Who am I? What is my identity? Why am I here? What am I supposed to do? Where am I supposed to go? The ESFP struggles wrestles with a constant perpetual confusion There, anything can be true and where the situation, their ability to understand the situation and the context in itself renders them unable to see beyond it how all situations connect and how everything ties together to form a bigger picture. So the ENFP's biggest fear is very different from this. The ENFP fears in many degrees uh, control but also rootlessness. The question is where do I belong? Where should I live? Where is my home? Can I trust these people? Can I feel safe here? Can I relax here? Can I set my foundation here? Will I feel content here? Should I move on to something else? There is this rootlessness pulling the ENFP personality type and making them constantly wrestle with what is or what has been or with their personal history or background. These differences can be understood from having inferior introverted intuition, as is the case with ESFP, and having inferior introverted sensing, as is the case with the ENFP personality type. Now looking at the ENFP, often what we see is the ENFP is the character of fantasy, of nature, of free-spiritedness, of freedom, of uh, variation, of diversity. This is a person with many different talents, with many different opportunities, with many different powers and abilities. But this is also a person who is not as comfortable in the spotlight. The ENFP speaks from the perspective of child SE where the ESFP speaks from the perspective of child and E. These are two very different perspectives on extroverted intuition and extroverted sensing. The ENFP's intuition clouds and overshadows their sensing priorities at all times. It also changes and warps their perspective on extroverted sensing. The ENFP is easily overstimulated or overwhelmed. They are not the people that tend to claim the room or the spotlight and they don't necessarily enjoy it. They can feel a sense of social anxiety, a social anxiety that is often alleviated by humor, making jokes, making fun of the situation and of yourself and what's happening or being quirky or random or a little odd or a little bit weird. The ENFP deals with extroverted sensing by stepping into this quirky, weird alter ego, you know, this uh, person who is a little bit odd or a little bit different from how everyone else is, how, how the normal person is supposed to be in a social setting or in nature or in their environment. So often what the ENFP feels is I never fit in anywhere. I never belong anywhere. I don't have a home. I don't have a place for myself. This is something that the ESFP 
rather experiences very differently. The ESFP is rather one that constantly feels tied down by family and by nature and by all their social expectations. The ESFP is always walking a thin line between, you know, speaking out and expressing yourself and taking to the stage while at the same time dealing with the expectations placed on you and how everyone sees you and how everyone thinks about you and what everyone else feels about you. So the ESFP is constantly feeling like I have to constantly live up to and honor all these expectations and norms that are prevalent in my society. I have to dress a certain way, act a certain way, do a certain thing. But I want to just do this. I, wanna, I just want to let loose. I just want to relax and play out and have fun. And that's child extroverted intuition. The ESFP has child extroverted intuition. Basically, what I mean with this is uh, the ESFP is constantly out of a need to show independence and out of a need to show action and strength and personality and to take over inclined to pull on extroverted intuition for dramatic effect and for shock value. The ESFP is good at finding fun ways to provoke and to um, get attention to themselves through ploys and uh, plays and uh, crazy actions and scenarios. Extorted intuition often works from brainstorming scenarios. If I do this, then say that, then this will happen, and then that will happen, and then that will happen. The ENFP goes constantly over all these scenarios. They're thinking about where this path will lead, and where that path will lead, and where that path will lead. And they see all these currents. The ENFP is also less action-oriented because of this. They see all these possible steps. So there's a tendency towards indecisiveness in which path do I choose? Where do I go next? The ESFP has none of these issues. Of course, there is a confusion as in where am I? What am I doing? Who am I? But this confusion never keeps the ESFP from speaking out and doing something trying something out, testing something out, just jumping on something, just seeing where it leads. So what you see is the ESFP is often an archetype of action that will do things just for the hell of it. Where the ENFP is often a person who is very much stuck in their heads. The ENFP is aware of their body and of their expressions and of how people interpret them and of what people are thinking and where a situation is going. So they're always one step ahead of everyone else. The ESFP is sometimes unable to predict the consequences of their own actions. Why people are getting upset with them, why people are being mean to them, why, why things are happening, what's going on, if people are being mean to you at all, if it's a joke or if they mean it seriously, what's happening, what's going on, I have no idea. That's the ESFP state of mind. The ENFP state of mind is... That person is trying to be mean to me now, now that person is trying this, now this is happening, now they're doing that. I think that person is trying to signal to me this and that and that and that. So there's constant reading here. You know, a, te a theme of patterns that you will find here between the ENFP and the ESFP that works as their similarities is their feeling function. Both are very honest types and both are very expressive. Both are types that are very passionate and spirited. They can get very emotionally involved with their life and with their actions and with their activities. They are very aware of and very interested in other people. Who are the people around me? What do they do? What's good about them? What's bad about them? How do they work? How do they think? What do they like? What do they dislike? They're constantly reading other people. They're also very interested in other people's stories. So tell me about yourself. Where do you come from? What got you here? What's interesting about you? What do you think? What do you like? What do you dislike? So they're often interviewing other people. They're often asking questions. They're often in the role of the reporter who is going, so tell me more about that. So what happened? Explain to me. What did they say? When did that have to happen? What did you do then? How did you feel then? What did that make you happy? Why did you act that way? So they're constantly observing and interpreting human behavior and studying other people. People say INFJs are good people readers, but I would say on a practical level, ENFPs and ESFPs are just as excellent or even better. 
with the ESFP and the ENFP, what you can do is you can look at their inferior functions and you can understand a lot about them from this perspective. You know, introverted uh, sensing and introverted intuition. The inferior function is often the baby function, if you to put it simply. It's uh, something that shows up when we are stressed or, or we, when we are anxious or something that can take us over if we don't deal with it. But it also acts as a prevalent day-to-day -day need. So what you see is often uh, introverted intuition shows up in ext uh, the ESFP as this constant priority to understand the situation better, to see the bigger picture, to seek out truth and clarity. The ESFP is constantly trying to find out what's really going on, what's really happening. Or do people really like me or do they just say so? Are people real with me? Are people honest with me? What, uh, who am I? Is this really who I am? What can I learn more about myself? Is there something I missed? Is there something I don't get? Is there something I've forgotten? Something that uh, will tell me who I am or will teach me something valuable? Is this something to learn? So what they do is they're very on, you know, this anxiety, you could call it, causes the ESFP to be very on and very attentive and very active and very much overactive almost in that when something happens the ESFP creates a sense of drama around this they make it seem important they make it they look at it very very much close up so this particular thing you said why did you say that though it was nothing so why did you say it Okay, well, it was just a yoke. So why would you yoke like that? You know, it's that wanting to really peer down something. And it's also that desire to want to peer straight at something that can keep you from understanding the bigger situation. Sometimes what's happening, what's important is happening behind the scenes. So the ENFP is very good at working behind the scenes. That's where the ENFP personality type lives. Sometimes the ENFP can be likened by the unicorn, you know, who is a shy creature that lives far away in the woods. And other times it can be like a forest spirit, some kind of fairy, some kind of pixie full of energy and enthusiasm and ideas. But also somebody who tends to avoid people, avoid confronting people, avoid directly intervening in the lives of others. So the ENFP is somebody who seeks, rather than to directly confront people, to indirectly influence their actions and behavior and to be a positive change. When you tell an ENFP you're upset, often they will not tell you to stop being upset, but what they will do is they will find a subtle way to make you feel better. So they will find small things they can do to take stress off your shoulders, they will think of subtle means to make things better, they will... Uh, look behind the scenes to really intercept what you're thinking. What is it exactly that you are upset about? What is it exactly that you are going through? So they often work behind the scenes and under, between the lines and away from what's obvious, away from the overt method. The ESFP works directly. They give examples for what they are doing, for what they are feeling. I'm upset because that person said this. I'm upset because this happened. Often the ESFP can explain very rawly and very viscerally what is going on and what's happening. But what you can say is, the question is, is this the most important thing or is it the feelings that were underneath it that were awoken by it? Or is it the history you had, your parents, what they did, or where they come from that can cause this to happen? So the ENFP has an interest in our history. Okay, what has happened to us? Where do we come from? What makes us who we are? What is our history? What is our past? What, is the, what are our past patterns? So the ENFP can feel themselves sometimes struggling against their own history, you know, constantly making the wrong decision or having some kind of trauma from the past repeatedly hit against you, you know, constantly having to deal with something that keeps pulling you back, you know, being pulled back between your history and where you come from and where you are right now. It can be something you keep revisiting as an ENFP, you keep revisiting this. Like uh, one character I'm reading about now who is an ENFP, I felt very much felt torn between her history as a child on the streets with no friends, always having to look out for herself and always having to protect herself. And now with friends, 
struggling to trust others because of her history, because of what she's experienced, and because of the, those voices in her head from the past, you know, of people who told her, you cannot trust people, just go away, just find, run, just get your own place, just uh, get away from here. People don't need you, you're worthless here, you're only holding people back, you're better off on your own, you know, that voice. And everyone has a history and everyone is experiencing and dealing with this. But the ENFP is the one that feels the most held back by their history. But at the same time, you know, with the inferior function, the inferior function is like a baby. So we need to take care of it and we need to deal with the anxiety uh, before it becomes too big to manage. So we need to recognize that, yeah, we don't feel safe or we don't feel secure. Uh, or if we have a history of... Uh, Having uh, been hurt by others, we also have to uh, validate our need to be appreciated by other people and to be taken care of by other people, you know, the, to speak out when people are doing this or to let people know that they cannot hurt you or that they should not hurt you or that they are, that they might hurt you. Just to put those fears out there. So... What you do need to do is you need to learn to develop your introverted sensing to understand how these things work and to be able to deal with these situations better. And that means revisiting old memories and old past, past habits and also being able to explore them in a healthy degree, you know, having a healthy time away, having a healthy need for something that will uh, give you, make you feel at peace and will make you feel rested and will make you feel calm, you know. Introverted sensing uh, can be about just having small day-to-day -day rituals or habits, but not too many of them. Too many of them that will overwhelm your inferior function. It can deal with some habits and some rituals and some recurring patterns, but too many of them can make you feel chained down, stuck, and locked away somewhere. Unable to move freely, unable to explore, unable to be free unable to spread your wings or to try new things or to have variation. Too much of introverted sensing can cause you to feel tied down by your baggage, lost in history. I'm doomed to feel a certain way because of my experiences in the past. I'm doomed to struggle with something because of my history. So we have to weigh, walk the balance, the thin line between revisiting old memories and wallowing in bad memories of neglecting and ignoring old memories while they grow invisibly in the shadows or confronting them and talking about them but then being able to move on and to express ourselves freely no matter. The ESFP personality types work from inferior introverted intuition and with inferior introverted intuition with introverted intuition as the baby function what you need to do is you have to get a healthy degree of privacy in your life you know the ESFP can never be alone for too long because they need to talk with people they need to do things they need to act they need to try new things but there is a healthy degree of being able to handle privacy and to be able to be alone and there is something unhealthy about constantly needing to be on and constantly needing to talk about and put everything in the open there is a healthy amount of secrets to be had, there is a healthy degree of privacy that we all need to be able to function and to process life and to develop our own identity and vision and integrity. Often as an ESFP, when you're putting everything out in the open, you also tend to appear stupid. And this is far from the truth. The ESFP is not stupid. But when you put things in the open without having thought about it, other people will be prone to judging you. Other people will be prone to say, no, <laughs> how can you think that? Wow, that's the most stupid thing I've ever heard. When you talk before you speak, you also attract the people uh, who predictably will try to shoot you down. So you might have book ideas, you might have um, intellectual thoughts or aspirations, smaller intellectual aspirations that are important to develop and nurture. You know, thoughts that you need to let simmer, things that you need to let... Rest. So give yourself an hour a day to engage in and to take time to those things without letting those things overshadow your existence or your actions or to let them uh, to make them feel make you feel alienated or 
too lost. You know, there's here again, once again, that balance between being so alone that you constantly feel left out and that you feel like you're constantly missing out on everything that's happening around you uh, versus having those important minutes here and there where you can think and where you can take some space and distance before you blow something out of proportion or make it bigger than it has to be. But also in resolving confusion and in being able to understand something fully before you act on it. Do it too much and you feel alone or like you're missing out. Do it too little and you feel confused and as if you don't understand what's going on anymore and as if you don't know who you are anymore. So the inferior introverted intuition can bubble up as uh, that manic anger and the upset that you can feel or fear and confusion you can feel when you don't know and understand who's your friend, who's your enemy, who can you trust, who can you not trust, who is good for you, who is bad for you, who, who should I, uh, what should I do in a situation. It's that identity lostness and context lostness and loss of bigger picture. So yeah, that's the ESFP versus ENFP personality types. I hope this video helped you understand that maybe ENFPs and ESFPs are a little bit different than what I thought. Maybe ENFPs are not the attention-seeking, crazy individuals that I thought, but rather a little bit quirky and weird uh, people who sit in the back of the room and who secretly control everything that's happening around you. Maybe the ESFPs are not the uh, stupid uh, drama-seeking drama queens or kings that constantly start things out of promotion, proportion. Okay, maybe sometimes they are, but rather people who aspire towards finding and understanding and gaining clarity and putting things in the open and reaching out to people and making people feel heard and seen. Yeah, no person is able to make you feel more seen and understood than the ESFP or the ESTP personality types. So these are the two types. If you like this video, visit patreon.com slash ericthor. And if you're confused on what type you are, feel free to send me a message and get a personal typing session with me. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next video.